Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 12th, 2017. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. All right, fasten your seatbelts. We're approaching cruising altitude on the Savage Nation. And there will be a whole lot of shaking going on, as usual. I don't mail it in. I call it in. I was all ready to do all the other stuff. Subway suspect who his family jumped in and condemned America. Care jumped in and said the police mishandled the investigation by being too rough on the bombers. Uh, Sib parents, who knows what? They don't like it. They let them go back where they came from. You know what I said yesterday? I'll say it again in case you missed it. You want to hear what I said? How about chain deportations? We've heard about chain immigration. How about chain deportation? It's real simple. You come in here, you bring your gang in from wherever. Yukistan, Makistan, Hakistan, Rakistan. If any one of them commits a terrorist act within five years, you all go. You're all going. And to top it off, to show you what a good nation we are, we send you an ACLU attorney against their will, and they go to live with you in your mud hut somewhere in Yukistan. And they can file all the briefs that you want. They'll eat your food. They'll drink your contaminated water. The ACLU attorney will really find out what they've been protecting. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. I was going to talk about that, but I'm not going to. Steve Bannon will be on this show at the bottom of this hour, 34 minutes after the hour. And, of course, Steve is, I call him the chief presidential advisor in absentia. Steve led the revolution within the White House. We all know that. And many people blame him for Trump going off the rails in the beginning because they say, well, Steve pushed the immigration reform when he shouldn't have. He should have pushed taxes first. Well, let me ask you something. If Steve had pushed the immigration reform stuff first, which he did, and the rhinos had gone along with him, maybe they would have rounded up the subway bomber yeah, before the bombing. Or maybe they would have rounded up the other one from a few weeks ago in New York who ran people over on the walkway. So, you know, it's very easy to condemn people who have a different p opinion than yours, but it could be that the people on the right, like him and like me, are right, not wrong. Maybe you're wrong. Maybe your good-natured liberalism works for you in some situations, but you better get out of the way when it comes to survival because you don't know what you're talking about. So I'm going to ask you something. Steve Bannon will be on at the bottom of the hour. We were going to talk about other things which is the bomber's brother has worshipped at the Blind Sheik's Mosque in New York City. Why hasn't this radical mosque been closed down for fostering hatred? Also, the true meaning of Hanukkah today, for those of you who want to hear it, I'm going to give it to you again. And this goes for Jews, Christians, non-Jews. It has a universal theme. I was in a bookstore last night looking for my book, God, Faith, and Reason, and it was not where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be up front with bestsellers. It was banished to the back of the store under Christian and inspirational books. They made it sort of like a uh, postcard. This is what's happening. God is being banished to the back of the bookstores. If you go to a bookstore and you find my book, God, Faith, and Reason, pushed to the back where it says Christian and inspirational, that may sound like a good thing, and it is, but that's not where it belongs. It belongs up front on the bestsellers. Move it to that place. So Steve Bannon is the uh, topic, really, and the issue is the seat in Alabama right now with Roy Moore. Roy Moore, 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 Roy Moore. Well, why is it important to keep this seat in Alabama in Republican hands? What would you ask Steve Bannon if you could? I may ask the questions for you, but you can call 855-400-7282, 855-400-SAVAGE. We're also going to talk about um, other topics after Steve leaves us. I have so many other things I want to get to. Don't ask. 
Don't ask. Uh, so many other things. A businessman with terminal cancer hosted an end-of-life party. He has the right idea. He hosted a party. He's 80 years old. Oh, was a big manufacturer. He was told he had in, he had terminal cancer. He threw a party for a thousand friends. I like that end of life party. That's a very good idea. We'll also talk about the flu scam. I saw an article in the local moronic newspaper written for idiots saying you got your flu shot. Why are you sick? <laughs> and of course the answer is because the flu shot is a scam. And so I'm going to tell you why you should never get a flu shot unless you're an or a moron and want to uh, make sure that you keep funding the big pharmaceutical companies that make a fortune off the flu shot. You're going to increase your risk of the flu rather than decrease it. I'll talk about that. Then, of course, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore. His wife is uh, some piece of work. The wife of embattled Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore today, uh, last night, fought back against accusations that her husband doesn't support blacks or Jews, saying at one point that one of their attorneys is a Jew. <laughs> it's kind of a funny statement. I mean, it's so nakedly what it is. I actually got a kick out of it. Why we can't be no racist? Because one of our lawyers happens to be a Jew. I like that. It is what it is. It's naked. That's what it is. One of their lawyers is Jewish. That's how they speak down there. They're clear. They're not... How shall I say there's no nuance? I like people without nuance. I can understand them better. People with nuance are looking to put a knife in your back. That's all I can tell you. Well, one of her attorneys is a Jew, Kyla Moore said. We have very close friends who are Jewish and rabbis. That's interesting. Okay. All right. Take her on our word. I actually look at it literally. Nothing wrong with that one. One of our lawyers is a Jew. My lawyer is Jewish. The only kind of lawyer to have is a Jewish lawyer. You've got to be stupid not to have a Jewish lawyer. Stupid. There's certain things that Jewish people are good at. One of them is the law. And the reason is because of the people of the book, people of the law, going back to the Torah and the Talmud, written by God and studied by Jewish people for thousands of years who had to memorize the law, so they learned how to read the law and interpret the law and argue over the law. That's why Jewish people tend to be so argumentative, because for thousands of years they had nothing to do but argue over the, over the law. Uh, because they were ostracized and pushed to the perimeters of society, they just sat and argued over the word of God. And in so doing, they became very good at arguing over very, very many things. The price of pickles, if the Bialy is any good, whether the fur coat is real or fake, whether it's a fugazi, you know, that kind of thing. And that's the story. I mean, look, what do you want me to do? It's December 11th already. We'll also have a little savage Trump talk from the past about the travel ban. We have Obama sticking his nose in to everything, saying not voting could lead the U.S. to Nazi Germany. Uh, we already were sort of in Stalin's Russia with you, Obama. Why don't you just go away already and leave us alone? Now, the organization CARE troubles me deeply. I never trusted them. I don't really think they're out for the best interests of America. That's the Council on American-Islamic Relations. Well, there they came out of the woodwork again right after the subway bomber yesterday. And one of their spoke mouths said that he was outraged by the New York Police Department's actions. You know, Mr. Can or whatever your real name is, Khan, Can, we don't buy this anymore. Who wrote the script for you? Let's listen to clip six. Let's listen to the double talk. We are heartbroken by the violence that was targeted at our city today and by the allegations being made against a member of our family. Family? But we are also outraged by the behavior of the law enforcement officials who have held children as small as four years old oh out in the Oh, my God. And who pulled a teenager out of high school classes. Oh, my God. To interrogate him without a lawyer, without his oh parents. Oh, my goodness. These are not the sorts of actions we expect sorts of actions. from our justice system. And we have every confidence you that do? our justice system will find the truth behind this attack and that we will, in the end, be able to learn what occurred today. I lock him up immediately for aiding and abetting. That's all. I put him right in the same cell. Why? What do you mean we have every confidence that our justice system will find the truth? They arrested the guy with the bomb off on his on his chest, which burned him, and this piece of garbage gets up and says, we'll find out what really happened? He's an aiding and abetting terror. 
Lock them up, lock them up, lock them up, lock them up. I'm sick of it. You know, just because this country is tolerant doesn't mean it's a doormat. And unfortunately, after eight years of Obama beating us up, we become a doormat to the third world. Well, a doormat we are no more. A doormat we are no more. Well, that's some of the topics. Those are some of the topics. Of course, the big topic is uh, the Steve Bannon thing. And I'm having you call. Could you could you screen them a little bit so I know what they're calling about? I have no idea. Lights are flashing. The pinball machine is lit. The phone number is 855-47282. Uh, I'm going to come back. I will take a call or a two. The big topic is Steve Bannon will be on at 34. It's a big guest. He's a big guest. Whether you like him or not is irrelevant. It actually doesn't matter what you think. Actually, it doesn't matter what you think. It matters what I think. Steve is a big guest. The man was basically running the country for a number of months. So in that regard, it's a big deal. And so I call him the chief presidential presidential advisor in absentia. And I'm asking you, what do you want me to ask Steve Bannon for you? We'll also be talking about Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore. Roy Moore, that'll be coming in later tonight. Roy Moore. You see the news tomorrow if he wins. Oh, my God. And the news tomorrow if he loses. Oh, my God. All the rhinos. The rhinos are for him now, aren't they? The rhinos realize if they lose more, they lose their majority. Finally, they woke up. Mitch McConnell, the gobbler, figured it out. The gullet tightened up a little bit and came to his senses, I guess. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Talk Radio 560 KSFO. It is Savage Nation. Why is this election in, uh, what's that state called? I don't even know. Alabama? Alabama. I think it's in the south somewhere. Why is it so important? I'm just kidding. Why did this become such an important election? What is it about? Why is that the biggest deal on earth right now? Alabama. All of a sudden, the whole world spins around Alabama. Why? What is that about? You know? I don't know. Why is that such a big deal? And why is Roy Moore so deplorable? Now, I know the accusations. I hear it. I can't even comment on it. I, I didn't live there. I don't know the culture of Alabama. You know, and uh, did he do it? Do we have evidence he actually solicited the favors of young girls? Do we know that for a fact? Or is it just hearsay evidence that is being used to smear men across the aisle, back and forth. I mean, the scythe is, is, is back left and right. And Ever since it started with Weinstein, it hasn't stopped. Do you remember what I said to you about, said to you about the French Revolution and the guillotine? That all a person had to do during the French Revolution was say, Jacques accuse, I accuse him or her. And without a trial, they have their head cut off. That's what the liberals are doing in this country right now. It started with Harvey Weinstein, and then it went on. I don't, I can't even remember all the names. Do you want to live in a nation where all, all it takes is an accusation to destroy a person forever? Their life, their career, their families, simply by an accusation? And don't you understand that when it starts, it rarely ever stops? And no one knows where it stops or who it hits next. You know, I told you before that during the French Revolution, the guillotine was very thirsty for blood. And it had an insatiable thirst for blood. And no matter how many necks were fed to it, it wanted more. It didn't end. It didn't end. You understand? It's very important you understand that this witch hunt, whether it's against Roy Moore or the other one from Wisconsin, I already the comedian, I can't remember his name. I never paid attention to him. The comedian from Saturday Night Dead, what was his name? Frank and Frank and Frank and Wine. Okay, don't you think they deserve a trial? Universities, Scythe. 
media scythe, Hollywood scythe, politics scythe. Who's going to be next? And when will the scythe start hitting women, powerful women, accused of uh, sexual improprieties towards other women? When? Tell me and why not. You're telling me it doesn't happen? Don't be stupid. Who's driving this is the question. Well, I told you last week I think it's clearly coming from the Obama camp, and the whole intent from the beginning was to uh, get Trump. I was the first to tell you that, but I'll tell you something else you don't know. Say, well, wait a minute. Logically, that doesn't make any sense because they're getting rid of some really good liberals to them, like Frankenwine and the other one, Conyers, right? Well, what you don't know is Conyers was too liberal, I mean, excuse me, too moderate, and Frankenwine was too moderate. They want to replace both of them with people far to the left of them. They're just getting rid of people who have become too moderate. Frankenwine, too moderate. Conyers to moderate. Wait until you see who they put in there. That party is moving so far to the Stalinist left that they, they're just sacrificing middle-of-the-road liberals. That's my estimation of what's going on. That's my estimation. 855 One of our attorneys is a Jew, said Roy Moore's white. Let's play that. Just listen for ourselves. Clip 9. Let's hear it. 09. Fake news would tell you that we don't care for Jews. And I tell you all this because I've seen it all, so I just want to set the record straight while they're here. That's a rebel yell. That's a rebel yell. One of our attorneys is a Jew. <laughs> I love it. I like that. Oh, would the Jew come we out here, please? We have very close friends that are Jewish and rabbis, and we also fellowship with them. Will that Jew please come out here on the stage with me? We want to show the Jew off. <laughs> you got to have fun. I mean, you can't take everything to your heart and say, okay, that's how they talk. That's who it is. They're straight up front. One of our attorneys is a Jew. It's funny. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like an old joke in the 60s. Uh, one, of, you know, one of my best friends is a black. We used to hear that and say it was racist. It's funny in a certain way, and it's cultural as well. I have an Italian friend, and I was in his restaurant last week. He got smoke damage. I won't mention so it was closed for a number of weeks. He had it all redone with beautiful painting. He said, Michael, come on in. He says, here, I want you to meet the guy who did all my new painting. He said, he's, he's from your country. What? What do you mean my country? You have no idea how people think of Jews who are not Jewish. I find it humorous. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. And here we are back on the Savage Nation, and direct from Alabama, we have the man of the hour, a very important man, a very important man, Steve Bannon, joins us on the Savage Nation from Alabama. Steve, thank you for calling the program. Steve, are we connected? Yeah, I know we have cell problems down there, but apparently I just tried him and we can't hook up. He had warned me there's some bad cell connections down there, but we're holding to see if Steve can be connected on the Savage. Steve, are you with us? I'm I'm right here, Doctor Savage. Oh, good, good. I was a little worried that we were going to get burned out from the from the uh, bad cell connection. So, Steve, a lot is at stake tonight. Do, what do the latest round polls show? Well, you know, the polls. Look, it's a special election taking place between you know Thanksgiving and and Christmas. So the polls have been kind of all over the map. I think Real Clear Politics has. Judge Moore up 2.2%. Uh, you know, the Fox poll had a poll that only had the art plus two rating that had Jones up 10. Um, you know, another poll, Emerson came out with, uh, with, uh, Moore up nine. So the poll's been all over the map. They've been trending towards, and I think, weighted, uh, to, to Moore. But it's very, this is all about turnout. It's all about who shows up today. And I think, just like in Virginia and other places, if people come out to vote, things will be fine. And if the, uh, you know, if the other side, gets people to turn out to vote, then it'll be fine for them. This is all about, as I said from day one, this is all about who wants it more. You know, it's all about who who can get a turnout machine uh, going and have volunteers go door to door and get people out. So we'll see. Steve, why, why, are you, why, are you so, why are you so involved in this election? What is it to you personally, or is it for the fact that he's so conservative and he matches the politics of conservatism, the true conservatism as opposed to the phony version. Is that basically it? Yeah, you know, I was a really a Mo Burks guy. I mean, uh, Mo Burks is really the populist 
and the, and the nationalists down here, but, you know, we've been on mobile works for many, many years, part of the House Freedom Caucus. I didn't really know Judge Moore that, that, that much. But when, you know, when it looked like Luther Strange was obviously the candidate of the establishment, I think it's very important for anti-establishment, grassroots conservative candidates uh, to win it. But clearly a big part of this coalition is the, is the Christian right, the evangelical right. And, uh, you know, Mo Brooks, unfortunately, the uh, president endorsed, I think, because of bad information given to him by guys in the White House. Uh, mm. you know, Luther Strange and, 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 and uh, Mo Brooks lost the first round. Uh, you know, as a private citizen, I thought it was, uh, you know, I, I uh, wanted to get involved. Now, I didn't actually do anything on the campaign, but uh, spent some time down here and talked to people and came to a, uh, came to a couple of rallies and, you know, lent my uh, effort to this. And, you know, Judge Moore got overwhelmed there for a while by, I think, totally fake news. And you saw how the opposition party rolls with the Republican establishment. I mean, the story broke the other day that Tim Miller, a GOP operative out of uh, the Bush world, uh, was mm. the guy that gave this information to the Washington Post. And uh, and so I think it's I think it's a lesson for all the conservatives, that the Republican establishment, led by guys like Senator Shelby down here in Alabama, mm. Mitch McConnell, and the guys mm. in Washington, D.C., the Uniparty, the permanent political class, the, the Republicans don't care about the majority. They would rather control, as long as they control it, they would rather control the Republican Party in a minority position. And I think it's incumbent upon grassroots people and what I call the deplorables all throughout the country to kind of stand up and find candidates that they want to back and then fight for them. Steve, if um, the president was against Roy Moore initially, and then he suddenly realized that if we lost that seat, he wouldn't, he'd be in trouble. And the president's been, been campaigning for Roy Moore, isn't that correct? Well, he, he came to Pensacola. He didn't come, come to Alabama, but he did endorse him uh, by, by, on tweets. He gave a, a very strong speech the other night. I, I'm sure you saw that in Pensacola where he really ripped apart Jones. I mean, he sees Jones. He said this day in his tweet that he's a Pelosi-Schumer puppet. And he had oh, boy. More of that. The, 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 the president really came in you know, hard, I think, for Jones a couple of weeks ago. He understands that his base is very important to him. You know, the president really is somebody that I think over the last three or four months has begun to understand the power of his base and how important it is for him to achieve his objectives. And, you know, Judge Moore is a perfect example of a candidate that's anti-establishment that kind of comes from uh, his base voters. And so I think the president over the last couple of weeks has done a very savvy and very smart between Twitter, between some comments he made, and then I think the home run speech in uh, Pensacola, which piqued that people totally fired up. And you know, it was only like 12 miles or 25 miles from the Alabama border. It was a, uh, it was a, uh, just a, I think a brilliant, uh, a brilliant speech. I know it got people uh, really fired up here in Alabama. Look, Steve, you were a big part of this government right at the beginning, and you pushed the immigration stuff and said, oh, you shouldn't have pushed it so hard. Well, I said today to someone who said that, had he pushed it even harder and the rhinos gone along with it, maybe the bombings wouldn't have happened in New York and the guy who ran people over a month ago would have been stopped. So I'm not so sure it was wrong to push immigration first on that, on that level. Have you been in touch with the president recently? Does he take your calls? Oh yeah, I, I talked to him. Uh, you know, I talked to him a lot. I don't want to talk about the content of the calls, but we actually talked. Uh, we talked today, and we talked the other day before the Pensacola uh, speech in the morning. Um, no, we still, you know, we still have the same relationship. I, I love the guy. I said this, 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 uh, this vote today, Doctor Savage, is really what I said last night in, in this at this barn outside of Dothan, Alabama, in Midland City. And I said, it's very simple. This is between the Trump miracle and the nullification project. That's what this is about. It's not even about mm. more anymore. And, and mm. the Trump miracle is what he's done on our sovereignty, what he's done mm. on our economy, and what he's done on mm -hmm. our security. If you look what this guy's accomplished in 10 months with no help at all from Capitol Hill, what he's done on our sovereignty, about immigration with the border crossings down, I think now the 46-year low, uh, you know, the, the Rays Act, which is really he's trying to muscle through Congress, everything he's do done on the ICE raids, everything else he's done on, 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 uh, on immigration. If you look at the economy, what the Fed, the New York Fed says 3.9% growth. This is all economic nationalism. The tax cut hasn't even been passed, right? The tax cut will be an accelerant. There's something out there, I think, in the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg that talk about the kind of super growth we could get in this tax cut. Well, uh, Steve, one of these days you and I should talk about it because for me it's not a tax cut. I live in California. I'm actually going to pay more. Uh, but And people filing as S-Corps are going to pay more, but that's a, a separate issue. What about the issue of the Mueller investigation hanging over everyone's head? Have they bothered you? That's a nullification project. I think it's unacceptable. They've got three 
investigations on Capitol Hill. They've got, you know, they have the House Intelligence, they've got the Senate Intelligence, they have the Senate Judiciary. Those are all controlled supposedly by Republicans, yet you've got your guy Adam Schiff out there running the House Intel investigation. You've, you've got Mark Warner, who's going to run for president in 2020. you got him running the Senate Intelligence investigation. You have Mueller's, which you've seen now, all these kind of conflicts they have. And, and by the way, I think Mueller ought to have, and that's that from day one, you know, Mueller ought to have a, a mandate uh, to, if there's any kind of collusion, with there, which there's none, he ought to have a full mandate to do that, but not to go into these other areas and to have a certain time frame of, of when you of when you do it. But you know, today they got the the Gillibrand uh, thing on the women. They're trying to re, uh, oh yeah resuscitate. They've got the the Twenty Fifth Amendment. You hear little Bobby Corker talking about all the time. Uh, yeah. State attorney generals are now getting into it. The president is under siege by the nullification project, and that's the Republican establishment, the opposition party media, and the progressive left is trying to drive a guy out of the White House and nullify the 2016 election. And that election was really the deplorables in this country spoke, and the working men and women in this country spoke, so they wanted things turned around. And Donald Trump, Dr. Savage, to me, has done an incredible job in the first 10 months of delivering in those promises. And I think that's what's driving the media. They're getting even more rabid. You can, you can tell now that they've, they've kind of, uh, you know, they've lost all rationality or just coming after him every day. And that's why I think Alabama's important. I think Alabama's an up or down vote. I said this last night in this barn. It's a hmm. down vote on the Trump miracle and the nullification project. And if you get Jones in there, you're just going to, you're just going to add fuel to the fire for the nullification project. Steve Bannon, before you go, I know you're running around like probably very heavy down there. I don't know if you want to answer this, but who around the president can we as voters trust? Who should he be wary of, in your opinion? Well, look, I think the president, you know, he, the president feels comfortable with certain people. And look, the White House under General Kelly is, is uh, you know, it's clearly uh, a little more organized than it was before. I'm not so sure that it gets every day it does the, uh, it does the things directionally that I think it ought to be doing, but, but General Kelly's in there. General, General Kelly's a good man. I think what you ought to see is that the president is, is responding more to his base than he's ever done before. And I think as long as the base is vocal, as long as the base is there for the president, as long as it has his back, every day's Christmas Day, right? We're going to have Jerusalem announced as the capital one day, and the next day we're going to have, you know, countries like uh, the UAE and Saudi Arabia trying to shut down the, the, the financing of radical Islamic terrorism out of Qatar. Uh, you're going to have uh, a better deals cut with China, with Korea. If the base stays there for the president, I think every day is going to be Christmas Day. And uh, that's what I just tell people. Just have the president's back, regardless of who's in and out of the White House. Uh, if the president, if the president responds to his base. You saw that in, uh, in, uh, in Pensacola. And he, he responds to guys like you, Dr. Savage, and Sean Hannity and other people. So I think well, he, No, no, no. He has not come on this show once since he was elected. He avoids this show, which is actually kind of disappointing to my listeners and to myself. But, hey, we, He's not been on Breitbart News Daily or the nighttime show since he's been elected. So don't don't feel bad. He's still done, done. No, I, I don't feel bad, but they're asking me by the thousands every day on on social media, why doesn't the president come on the Savage Nation? I said, I don't know. I continue to support him. I have no idea why. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll put a good word in uh, is for the people. <laughs> <laughs> you put in a good word. Tell him that his his base is still here. It hasn't gone anywhere. <laughs> Yes. So, Steve, what 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 are you doing down there? The minute the election is over tonight, where do you go? Are you going back to to your ra your radio career? I understand on Sirius. No, I've dedicated my life. I'm doing radio, and I'm the executive chairman of Breitbart. But I I've dedicated my life to building this movement. I mean, I'm spending every day meeting with uh, advocacy groups, meeting with grassroots uh, leaders, meeting with grassroots groups, uh, talking to aspiring politicians, uh, talking to donors. I've really dedicated my life. I do radio. Every day we're expanding. We're going to have uh, 45 hours of live news radio on Sirius XM, the Patriot Channel. Uh, but in January, starting in January, we got you know we got 30 hours or 36 hours right now. Well, you're going to be you're going to be a competitor. You better not have someone on during drive time in New York on the East Coast. We do, we do not have anyone on in your time slot. I would not allow that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, cr I crush him. I'm like Donald Trump. I would crush my opponent. No, look. You know, here's the thing, Steve. Are you going to run for office? It sounds to me like you're building a movement. You know, years ago I wrote a book, many books. My latest is God, Faith, and Reason, and I'm going to send you one. But, Steve, in one of my last books I said we need a nationalist party. It sounds to me as though you really are building the the base for a new party, are you? 
Well, no, I think what we want to do is, 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 is it's pretty obvious. We want to take over the Republican Party. The Republican Party should be, and really is, Dr. Savage, if you look at the total cumulative votes in the primary season of 2016 between Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, Mike Huckabee, and Dr. Carson, which I consider the grassroots or outsider candidates, I think mm-hmm. they I think they got 85% of the cumulative vote or 84% of the vote. The votes in the Republican Party are really this kind of populist, uh, nationalist, conservative, traditionalist, grassroots of votes. I think it's just you've got the donors and you have this permanent political class and these consultants and lobbyists that kind of control it. So I think the number one thing I'm working on is to take over the Republican Party, turn it more into a worker-based, entrepreneurial-based, middle-class party, as you mm-hmm. can hear with, uh, with things like Judge Moore, and, uh, and let that move in. Now, I have no interest. I'm not a politician. I, I've never had an interest in being mm-hmm. a politician. I, I just mm-hmm. like... Uh, I like building this movement and going around seeing people, and I love uh, working with the uh, the polls. So we could say, if I were to summarize uh, in reality, Steve Bannon wants to take over the Republican Party and make it more reflective of the American people. I think that's a fair statement. Would that be? That would be, absolutely, and, and the, with the emphasis on American workers. This has to be a workers. The strength of this country is, is, the, is the blue-collar, in middle class uh, people in this country that made this country great for many, many generations, right? Mm. They've bequeathed to us the greatest republic in the history of mankind. I mean, look, I've listened to you, Dr. Savage, for many decades now, and you, you've, you, you, you have been a, a almost like an Old Testament prophet in saying what was going to come. And I, <laughs> I love that. I love that. I'm an honorary Old Testament prophet. <laughs> but it's the people that listen to your show. That is really the backbone of this movement. And so that's what uh, I think there's a real opportunity to make some fundamental changes. I think you have to make fundamental changes in the Republican Party to do it. There's a lot of, obviously, the Mitch McConnells of the world and the, and the Senator Shelby's of the world don't like that. But I think mm-hmm. we live in a democracy, and it's who can outwork people. And, I, and look, this, this movement doesn't have a lot of money, and it doesn't need a lot of money. What it needs is, is elbow grease. And the power of the people. Power of the people. Hey, Steve, before you go, are you planning on being... Anywhere in Southern Florida next week with the president? Uh, no, down in Mar a Lago. No, I'm actually. I'll probably be. I think I'm going out of the country for a couple of days, and then, and then uh, come back and uh, maybe spend Christmas with the family, hopefully. But no, I'll be that's back. beautiful, Steve. You're doing a great job. No matter what people say about you, I still like you. And I'm joke. That's not a joke. I mean it. People don't understand you at all. It's easy to castigate people. I've been I've been castigated for 24 straight years. They've twisted my message of borders, language, and culture into Nazism. Well, you know what? I am no Nazi. And the fact of the matter is the accusers are the Nazis, and you know that better than I do. Steve, keep up the good work. Thank you for being with us on the Savage Nation, and uh, we'll see you sometime in the near future. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Look, I got to tell you now that, um, you know, sleep is important to me, and I've been sleeping on this great mattress, Casper mattress, and frankly, I do pick it over every other mattress I ever had. It does help me get the best night's sleep, period, and once you try Casper, you're going to love yours as much as I love mine. Switching to Casper, no brain, a higher quality mattress, more affordable price. You'll sleep cool and comfortable every night thanks to Casper's two high-tech foams, much better than on the old overpriced mattress that you probably have. And Casper ships right to your door for free in a small how-they-do-that-size box. They'll even pick it up if you don't love it and refund you everything. From its breakthrough design and superior quality to its packaging to letting you try it for 100 nights in your own house, it's no wonder Casper was named one of Fast Company's 50 most innovative brands of 2017. Sleeping on a mattress is the best way to try it. Put Casper to the test in your own home for 100 nights free. Go to Casper.com, code SAVAGE, and I'm going to get you $50 off the purchase of your mattress. You heard me. That's Casper.com, code SAVAGE, and you will get a big $50 off the purchase of your mattress. Casper.com, terms and conditions apply. We're almost out of time. Steve Bannon was on. We talked about a lot of things. I thought the questions I asked were answered fairly and honestly. And the most important question that I asked is the one that you wanted to ask. And so when I come back on the Savage Nation, we'll go to regular news views and reviews. 
855-407-282. And the questions and comments about the Steve Bannon interview. This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. So, I'm a dog, and I just got adapted by this new human guy, and I'm starting to wonder how he got along without me. I mean, okay, something as simple as walking around the block. He's got this leash thing, and he puts me on one end and him on the other, and I'm just taking him around. I, I think he's afraid of getting lost. Without that leash and me guiding him along, I don't think he'd find his way back home, but it's kind of cute. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. <laughs> 